This video that you're about to watch is going to turn you into a freak athlete. This is video number four in a four part video series on how to get your bounce as high as humanly possible. Video number one was the best and worst plyometric exercises to jump as high as possible. Video number two was the optimal sets and reps for every single plyometric exercise. Video number three was the best and worst weighted exercises to increase your vertical jump. And today video number four is the most optimal sets and reps for every single weighted vertical jump exercise that you can do to increase your vertical jump, jump as high as possible and dunk a basketball. Let's get it. The most important thing that I need you to understand before getting into this tier list is the difference between speed, power, strength, and hypertrophy. We're not going to be talking about speed so much, but power, strength, and hypertrophy all require different set and rep schemes. For example, when you're training for power, the reps are going to be lower because you are trying to be as explosive as possible every single rep. So it might be something like five to eight sets of three reps for power training, whereas hypertrophy training on the other end of the spectrum might be eight to 30 reps for hypertrophy training. 30 is a little bit crazy if you ask me. Personally, I never get up to sets of 30 reps, but some other trainers do. So hypertrophy is eight to 30 reps. And then strength is normally one to five reps to maximize strength gains. But you also have to understand that when you are doing hypertrophy training, you are also simultaneously building your strength. So just understand that there are different rep schemes that we are going to use for different training outcomes. And I'll try to explain that more as I go. So let's start down here with minor adaptations. Then we'll go to good adaptations adaptations, great adaptations, and we will save the best for last and finish off with the exercises that will cause major adaptations on your vertical jump. Starting it off with core training. Now, obviously core training is not any one specific exercise. The reason I put core training just as one general category into this tier list is because we had all different types of core training exercises. We had everything from explosive medicine ball side tosses to dead bugs to a pale off press. So for core training, this is perfect. I want you to think about the categories that I just named. What is the training outcome of the core exercise that you are doing? If it's something like a med ball wall side toss, you might do something like four or five sets of three to eight reps explosively, as explosive as possible. But if you are going for strength, like a pale off press, you might do three sets of 10 to 12 reps. If it's something like a plank, you might do three sets of 30 to 60 seconds. So core training is one category. And when training your core, I really just need you to think Think about what is the training outcome that you are trying to get from that specific exercise. Is it power? Is it strength? Is it hypertrophy? And then you're going to base the sets and reps on that. So once again, power is going to be lower rep, more explosive. Strength for your core is going to be a bit higher rep because we are focusing more on muscular strength and endurance than maximum strength. Um, and then hypertrophy is going to be higher rep, eight to 30 reps or a duration of seconds that you're going to do on something like a plank or a side plank or something like that core training. It really depends on the outcome that you're trying to get from that exercise. Ankle strengthening, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. It's the exact same thing. This is a category of exercises, but when I say ankle strengthening, what I was talking about, the most common in all of these programs was dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, ankle inversion, and eversion. So for those, you would want to do more of strength and hypertrophy, so a bit higher reps. So anything from 8 to 20 reps for that type of ankle strengthening. Medicine ball throws are going to be more explosive and more focused on power. So when I say medicine ball ball throws. I'm talking about medicine ball wall side tosses, overhead tosses, medicine ball slams, um, a lying medicine ball throw. And these are going to be done normally for like three sets of three to eight. You can get up to 10 to 12 reps depending on the exercise. Just remember that a medicine ball throw is a power based exercise. So the reps are going to be a little bit lower and as explosive as possible. Reverse sled drag. Personally, I just use as a quad pump and a warm up, And I do that for three sets of two minutes straight. And I superset that with isometrics if it means any anything to any of you out there. Single leg knee extension isometrics. The research shows that three to five sets of 45 second isometric holds are going to be best for you if your goal is tendon health and tendon strength. However, anecdotally, what I like to do is on one day, three to five sets of 45 second isometrics. And then the next time that I do that same isometric, I do one to two sets of two minutes as heavy as I can for two minutes. Next, we have tibialis raises. See, this is an exercise where you could get up to 30 reps and people wouldn't think you're crazy. 
So tibialis raises I would do for three sets of 15 to 30 reps because it's going to be more focused on strength and hypertrophy. Obviously not maximum strength because you're not maxing out a tibialis raise. Anyways, three sets of 15 to 30 reps is going to be great. Wall sits are going to be the same thing as single leg knee extension isometrics, three to five sets of 45 seconds if your goal is 10 in health, 10 in strength. But then some people like this as just a strengthening exercise in general. But what I like to do is the same exact thing that I said for single leg knee extension isometrics. I like to do one day, three to five sets of 45 seconds. And then the next time that I do wall sits, I do one set of three minutes straight. So very quickly, if we go back to the single leg knee extension isometric, I just want you guys to visualize this very quickly. On one day, I'm doing three to five sets of 45 seconds. Now I can do more weight with doing only 45 seconds than I can for two to three minutes. So if I do a two to three minute isometric hold, it has to be less weight. So I'm pretty much just attacking my tendons from all angles. Banded walks, these are done for strength and hypertrophy of the gluteus medius. So what I like to do is three sets of 10 steps forward and 10 steps backwards on something like a monster walk or a half moon walk, and then three sets of 10 steps each side if I do a lateral side step. Cable pull throughs are gonna be similar. The focus is strength and hypertrophy, not mass maximum strength, just general strength and hypertrophy. So something like three sets of 10 to 12 to 15 reps are going to be great for cable pull through. And good mornings you're going to do for something like three sets of 10 to 20 reps. And I probably threw everybody a curveball when I talked about band good mornings. What I like to do is 15 to 20 reps of band squats very quickly focusing on the stretch shortening cycle so this i use this as a contract and relax technique and then i do band good mornings directly after that so it's a superset with band squats immediately into band good mornings and i do another 15 to 20 reps of band good mornings and i do three sets of this so for me this is much higher rep but you can be safe doing three sets of 10 to 20 reps because the focus is going to be hypertrophy and it has to be higher rep because we are using a band so you can't just continuously go heavier and heavier and he heavier with a band at that point when you've maxed out the band you might as well just grab a barbell and do barbell good mornings or dumbbell good morning hyper extensions once again general strength and hypertrophy so something like three sets of 10 to 20 reps is going to be good you could do 10 to 12 personally i like to do these for a bit higher rep and i do have these in the hypertrophy phases of my program so i do these for two to three sets of 20 reps and then i focus on starting with body weight and then they grab a five pound dumbbell 10 pound dumbbell 15 and go on and on and on and continue to progressive overload in weight at that three sets of 20 reps scheme. Lateral lunges, you're going to be in the range of three sets of five to 10 reps. Can't go wrong with three sets of eight reps. That's that's probably perfect. If you do lateral lunges for three sets of eight reps each leg, you're gonna get yourself some gains. Lunge holds are going to be the same thing as a wall sit or a single leg knee extension isometric hold. This is just an isometric hold, so you could do three to five sets of 45 seconds, or you could do one set of three minutes and torture yourself but get very strong while you're doing it. Rear foot elevated split squat isometric hold is going to be the same exact thing as lunge holds. Three to five sets, 45 seconds. Or you can hold it for even longer and test your mental toughness. Nordic curls is a tricky one because it's a tougher exercise. It's more of an advanced exercise if you are doing full range of motion. So I would do Nordic curls for three to four sets of five to 10 reps and that is if you're going full range of motion you can use your hands to help you but it is a strength and hypertrophy exercise however you could use it for as low as you know five reps and just really focus on that eccentric because it is a tougher exercise so nordic curls is still focused on strength and hypertrophy it is going to be on the lower end of the hypertrophy scheme more geared towards strengthening your hamstring oscillating rear foot elevated split squat this is a contract and relaxed technique so it is going to be a bit higher rep because the goal is to teach the antagonist muscle to bro chill out we trying to make some gains i explained this in the last one so i'm not going to get into that but just know that oscillating rear foot elevated split squat is a contract and relaxed technique so you are doing a short range of motion over and over and over so the reps are going to be higher there ain't nothing wrong with doing 30 reps of an oscillating rear foot elevated split squat but normally you do it for a set uh time so pgf performance has it for i believe it's three sets of 30 seconds 
long and then you do 15 seconds in the bottom range of motion and you do 15 seconds in the top range of motion so oscillating riff with elevated split squat just due to the nature of what we are trying to improve that's the whole key here what is the outcome that you want from this exercise it is going to be a bit higher rep overcoming isometrics the research shows five to six seconds is going to be most beneficial for you and you would do something like three to eight sets of five to six seconds personally i have found that the longer that you pull against the bar the less and less force that you produce so for me i like to do three to eight sets normally five to eight sets of three to five second isometrics however pgf performance had eight second overcoming isometrics in his program so we'll say anything under eight seconds you don't want to be pulling against a bar for 10 seconds like the point is maximum force production so there's only a certain amount of time that you can pull as hard as you can against that bar to maximize that force that you are producing after you pull and pull and pull atp adenosine triphosphate gets used up and you're just not pulling as hard anymore so we're not even doing the thing that we're focused focusing on and that we are trying to improve by pulling for a long period of time. So what I will say for this one is three to eight sets of anywhere between three to eight seconds is going to be beneficial for you. And I will let you just come to your own conclusion as to how long you want to pull, push or pull against that ball. Reverse hyperextensions. For me, I use the same exact set and rep scheme that I use for regular hyperextension. So I will do two to three sets of 20 reps, but you can't go wrong with doing 10 to 20 reps. If you have body weight, then you're going to go a little bit higher in rep. If you have a reverse hyperextension machine, you could get a little bit lower in rep and go heavier, focusing more on the strength than the hypertrophy for those reverse hyperextensions. Reverse step downs and side step downs you could do for the same exact sets and reps. These are normally used in a build the base phase, a prep phase. These are exercises used to get you ready for more intense exercises and you cannot go wrong with three sets of eight to 12 reps with three sets of 10 reps being the sweet spot. For single leg seated pistol squats, this is just a regression of a normal pistol squat. I would do three sets of 10 reps each leg until you can get to the point where you can do a full pistol squat. Banded kettlebell swings and normal kettlebell swings, you're going to be doing for essentially the same sets and reps, maybe a little bit lower rep on the banded kettlebell swings because they're a little bit tougher because we have a band attached to the kettlebell. However, I have seen trainers go a bit crazy. I myself, have gone a bit crazy on banded kettlebell swings and gone higher in rep, like three sets of 15 reps. However, we do have to remember that banded kettlebell swings and kettlebell swings in general is a power exercise. So a bit lower reps is probably going to be better because once we get to the 15th rep of that kettlebell swing, are we really swinging it as hard and as explosive as we were for reps one through five? Probably not. So if I were you, I would do any sort of kettlebell swing for three to four sets of six to 12 reps. Eight to 10 is probably going to be your sweet spot as explosive as you can. Banded quarter squats are a bit tricky because you can use this in a couple different ways. So if you look at PGF performance, he has lower reps. So something like five sets of three to five reps on banded quarter squats. But for me, I like this as a contract and relax technique. And I do these for three sets of 20 reps of banded quarter squat. So this one, you could do it like PGF or you could do it like an oscillating rear foot elevated split squat. It really just depends on the outcome and what you are trying to get from that exercise. Hang high pulls is going to be an exercise where we are focusing on explosiveness and power. So it is going to be a bit lower in rep. I think the highest that I get for hang high pulls would be eight reps. And that's when I'm warming up to my working sets. So we can't even really count that. So hang high pulls, I would do for five to eight sets of two to three reps. You can get up to three to five reps, but hang high pulls is very similar to hang cleans up here, which I'll talk about soon, but it's going to be lower rep. You wanna focus on being as explosive as possible every single rep. Hamstring curls is going to be one of those general strength and hypertrophy exercises. So you can't go wrong with something like three sets of 10 to 20 reps. I would advise you to go a little bit heavier on your hamstring curls, maybe even eight to 12 reps and then progressive overload, not by doing more reps, but by adding more weight and really trying to strengthen those hamstrings. That is going to be good for hamstring curls. Great exercise. Hip thrust is a bit of a tricky one and it really depends on the outcome that you want from your hip thrust. So there's nothing wrong with doing three sets of 20 reps of a hip thrust. Now, normally that's a dumbbell or a plate hip thrust 
thrusts um, to improve your general strength and hypertrophy. However, in the programs that I have reviewed, we are talking about barbell hip thrusts. So normally these are focused on improving your maximum strength. So we could do something like five sets of three to five reps of a barbell hip thrust. Focusing on improving force as much as possible, getting as strong as possible through our barbell hip thrust. Pistol squats for my athletes, what I do is three sets to failure on your weak leg first, and then you match that same amount of reps on your strong leg. Do five reps on your weak leg, and then match that. Do five reps on your strong leg so that we don't create more of an imbalance. You could do these pistol squats for something like five to 10 reps. It really depends on how strong the athlete is because this could be a max strength exercise. If pistol squats are very hard for an athlete, or this could be more of a general strength and hypertrophy exercise if that athlete is stronger and pistol squats aren't that hard for them. RDLs, Romanian deadlifts are going to be very similar to hip thrusts in the sense that you could use these for general strength and hypertrophy and do something like three to four sets of 10 to 12 reps. You could also use these for maximum strength and do something like five sets of three reps of RDLs as heavy as you can. So Romanian deadlifts really depends on the outcome of what you want from this exercise. Single leg RDLs, you might think were the same as RDLs, but but single leg RDLs, I would do for a bit higher reps. So when I program single leg RDLs, I like three to four sets of eight to 12 reps of single leg RDLs. Step ups, the rep scheme is going to be kind of in between RDLs and single leg RDLs. So for step ups, you're not gonna do five sets of three reps of step ups. However, you're likely not going to do three sets of 12 reps of step ups. So I think step ups are a little bit more similar to the rep scheme of single single leg RDLs. So for step ups, the goal is normally to strengthen and I don't think you can go wrong with anywhere between three to four sets of five to 10 reps of step up. Standing calf raises, and I will just throw in seated calf raises. So calf raises in general, you are normally going to go for a bit higher rep. It is normally focused on general strength and hypertrophy. However, I have seen, you know, Isaiah Rivera, John Evans, guys from THP Strength do sets of three reps of calf raises. And Isaiah Rivera is arguably the highest jumper in the world. So calf raises is really one of those exercises where we have to think, well, what do we want out of it? If you're doing five sets of three reps of seated calf raises, then obviously the goal is maximum strength. If you're doing three sets of 20 reps, then the goal is general strength and hypertrophy. So as you can see with many of these exercises, I felt it very important to explain the difference between power, strength, and hypertrophy, because with all of these exercises, it really depends. The sets and the reps is going to depend on what the outcome is and what you want to get from these exercises. For back squats, the sets and the reps are gonna get wild because you can pretty much use a back squat for anything that you want to improve. You can use it for power, you can use it for strength, you can use it for hypertrophy, you can use it for speed, although there's just, there's better ways. But just as an example, let me ask you this question. Could you do a back squat for three sets of 20 reps to improve your hypertrophy? Of course you could. Could you do it for three to four sets of 12 reps to improve your general strength and hypertrophy? Of course you could. Could you do five sets of five to improve your strength? Yes. Could you do a one, two, or three rep max to improve maximum strength? Yes, you could. Could you do five sets of three or eight sets of three with lighter weight going as explosive as you can to improve your power? Yes, you could. So it really depends. This exercise is the epitome of it really depends on what you want from that exercise. You can improve strength, power, hypertrophy, whatever you want to improve you can improve it with a back squat deadlifts are going to be very similar to the back squat in the sense that you could use it for strength power or hypertrophy however there aren't many people out there using deadlifts for hypertrophy and if you do i hope that you're using a trap bar um, because a trap bar is just going to be more favorable to doing higher reps and more explosive power work. So I'd much rather you do eight sets of three to improve your power with a trap bar deadlift than eight sets of three to improve your power with a straight bar deadlift. However, if all that you got is a straight bar, then baby, use that straight bar. So just to answer the question of how many sets and reps, when I do deadlifts, if I wanna focus on strength, it might be five sets of five. Maybe I'm doing, you know, doubles or triples, you know, like five sets of three. Um, normally I don't go higher than five reps with a deadlift lift, but you can if you want to get crazy. Hang cleans we're pretty much doing for power, so we're just going to stay around the ballpark of five to eight sets of one to three reps. We're, 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 we're staying there. Power cleans is going to be the same thing. Believe it or not, power cleans 
are focused on power. Power cleans, the same as hand cleans, you're going to stay in the ballpark of five to eight sets of one to three reps. Front squats are going to be the same as back squats. It really depends on what you are doing your front squats for and what you want out of them. You could do high rep front squats to improve hypertrophy. You could do three sets of 10. If you wanna improve muscular strength and hypertrophy, you could do five sets of five to focus on max strength. You could do five sets of three for power training, although I'd much rather you do a back squat for that. Front squats are going to be very similar to back squats. Lunges are a strength and hypertrophy exercise. You can get a little bit of power. Some coaches like you to pop out of that that lunge i like it more for just pure strengthening um, but you're going to do anything you could do sets and reps or you could do a certain amount of distance like somebody might say uh 20 yards another coach might say three to four to five sets of five to ten steps each leg just use the rep scheme of strength and hypertrophy and you can't go wrong with lunges last but not least we have the rear foot elevated split squat now this one is going to be similar to the back squat although you have to remember it's a single leg exercise, so it's going to take twice as much time. But if you wanna do three to four sets of 20 reps of rear foot elevated split squat to improve your strength and your hypertrophy, then by all means, knock yourself out. You're not normally going to go as low in rep as something like a back squat. For example, it's not uncommon to see somebody one rep max a back squat. However, have you ever seen somebody say, hey bro, what's your one rep max rear foot elevated split squat? Not much. So three reps would really be the lowest that I would go. But quite honestly, with my athletes, five reps is the lowest that I go on rear foot elevated split squat. I like five sets of five as heavy as they can, but there's nothing wrong with three to four sets of a little bit higher rep like 10 to 12 to even 20 if you want to go crazy but anyways guys this is my opinion of the perfect sets and reps for the top 40 most common strength training exercises to improve vertical jump that i have seen in all of the training programs that i have reviewed if you want me to be your coach and write your programming for you the link will be down below in the description or you can get one of my pre-made vertical jump training programs or upper body programs i have taken thousands of athletes to the next level at this point in time and you you could be next. All that you got to do is click the link in the pinned comment or the description of this video, but I will see you in the next video. I love you all. Peace.